let's actually go a bit deeper than we usually have time to. Let's begin to think about some of the prevailing orthodoxies, some of the ways that we're used to working, and say, is this the right way? Is this policy really the appropriate one? And crucially, how is my particular part of the, the professional community concerned with the well-being of young people actually fit? And how, and how do we need to check? Well, very strongly that we may need to abandon certain deeply held um, thinking about how we work. We may need to move into some very challenging areas in order to secure the outcomes that we believe in. That the overwhelming factor that is significant in, in a young person's potential to succeed, however we define success, is their own personal, uh, those personal factors, those personal qualities. The function of a caterpillar is to become a butterfly, not a better caterpillar. And I think we've developed most of our policy in the past 25 or 30 years on making sure we've got really good caterpillars. All those who are involved in education will know there has to factor involved in boys' handwriting. So let's just stop teaching boys <laughs> handwriting. It doesn't work. My, my handwriting is disgusting, even at my age. So let's stop teaching it, because they don't need it. So essentially, is we need to begin, perhaps, to do some fundamental questioning and challenge and say, why are we doing this? Why are we still examining children at the age of 16, when really most uh, education systems know that that's not a reliable judge? So the way forward, I think, is collaboration. We've really got to start collaborating. We've really got to learn how to work in a very, very structured and interdependent way. And that, again, challenges many prevailing orthodoxies. And crucially, how do we move away from that type of culture, where that's seen as the norm, into that type of culture? And it's a real challenge. It's essentially, the school is the common experience for every family. The school is the one time when children are at their, uh, are being observed and, uh, and learning and understanding. And therefore, schools I think, do have a significant part to play. But they need, perhaps, to begin to explore different ways of working. I'm certain that many of you here will be able to give powerful examples of this. I'm just increasingly intrigued and, and really um, delighted by the way in which we schools are beginning to appoint, for example, and support work. Firstly, we need perhaps to use the school and to develop the school as a community. You know, and that surely we should have leadership across the public sector, across the private sector, across the voluntary sector, not just in terms of access for a few, but leadership for all, particularly young people, leadership in the community, and to focusing in not so much on technical skills, for example, the notion of trust, empathy, and emotional move. My, my presentation is saying the one thing that I regretted about the model of every child that was emerging was the fact that it did, did not include a child's entitlement to unconditional love. The schools are and collapsing yeah. the regime. Why do you see the <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> I do take your point. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just question slightly the notion of schools, some schools. Yeah? And I think that what is worrying for me from the, the, the pragmatic perspective of schools and the, the pressure to improve is that some schools are working in a very sophisticated and skillful way. And it goes back to this basic caterpillar and butterfly argument again. The, essentially, some schools are still struggling with the caterpillar. Mm -hmm.